listeners, welcome to Why Not Mint Money. I'm Satya Santanam from the Mint Money team. In this episode, we'll go through the personal finance journey of one of the most respected executives in the mutual fund industry, Ms. Radhika Gupta, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at Edelweiss Mutual Fund. Radhika Gupta has more than 15 years of global asset management experience. She's also known as the girl with a broken neck. She says that she is a conservative investor and believes in keeping her portfolio simple. Now, without any further ado, let's start the episode. Hello, Radhika. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm excited to know about your personal finance journey, like many of our listeners. We also want to take some of the suggestions from your experience on how to go about our own personal finance journey. We don't want to know how many ping pong, ping pong balls fit in a Boeing's aircraft, but simple steps that we have to have uh, for a smooth personal finance journey. Welcome to the show, Radhika. Thank you. Thank you so much, Radhika. My first question is about your first investment. Like many, you also started investing only after a few years of getting into a job. I also remember you uh, saying in one of the podcasts that uh, you bought a handbag with your first salary and you still have it. Uh, uh, What prompted your first investment and uh, is it into equity or a simple fixed deposit? No, so I was working in the US and I started earning in 2005 and obviously there's a little bit of inertia, you know. So I was very good about saving. Look, I come from a family where we were always very, we were never short of money, but we were never rich when my father worked in the government. So I think saving was very important. So that was inculcated from a very young age. I mean, my mother's favorite phrase is Sasta Sundar Tikau, even till today. I think it's a very Uttar Pradesh thing, but she says it all the time, value for money. I mean, we, we are obsessed with these words. Um, you know, and I still love sales and bargains. I mean, my husband gives me a lot of uh, grief over it. So I think saving, I started in 2005 and six, despite buying that handbag. Um, investing, I actually started at the worst time possible. I think it was end of 2006 or early 2007. Um, and these were essentially the bonuses. And that was a good good few years for bonuses on Wall Street. Um, so it was largely equity. In fact, it was all equity. Um, and it was a mix of US equity and emerging market equity. Um, and it was via funds. It wasn't via single stocks. I've actually never personally throughout my career, because I've been in the money management business, invested in stocks. Um, I'm a big believer in professional fund management. So I, outside of the company I work for Edelweiss, where I have stock because of ESOPs, I have never owned anything uh, single stocks. It's always been funds. Um, and it was some US and some emerging market funds. Uh, and it was all equity. And the reason it was all equity is because I was told I'm a young person. So young people should take risk um we obviously wasn't very wise because we know what happens and happened in 2008 Uh, but that's how i started that's brilliant and uh what does that uh, handbag signify to you now when you look at the handbag what does it uh you know remember uh, remind you now now my mother has the handbag i think the, the handbag it's actually important because it, it, it it's the joy of earning uh it's the joy of being financially independent at the age of 21, 22, um, and even if it's a silly trivial handbag, um, you know, it's it's the joy of being able to buy something with your own money um, without having to ask someone uh, and carry something with your own money. So I think it's financial independence, maybe a little bit at the age of 21, 22, that feeling of having arrived in life, um, all of that, you know, uh, the feeling of finally after years of studying and you know struggle etc being able to do something for yourself I, I think it's a lot of those things i cannot agree with you more on this radhika uh and uh, if we can have a quick takeaway for uh, listeners here what do you advise to someone who just started their career and about to invest and if you see uh, especially women um, you know, fortunately, uh, they're earning good salaries, but maybe probably they may not know where exactly to invest. So what is your uh, suggestion for uh, young people who just started their career and about to invest? Okay, so I think two, three things. One, uh, don't delay investing like I did. Um, it's important to start early. So it's important to start the investing journey early. Secondly, 
I think learn before investing. I didn't learn as much. Uh, you know, uh, don't follow the age old rules that, oh, you are young, you have risk. Well, those don't work. Understand yourself, understand what works for you. And don't jump so fast into it like I did. I think go a little more slowly. Um, that That is important. Learn, go slowly, get started, make mistakes, uh, learn. Um, and the third is, uh, you know, and this is going to sound like counter advice from someone who's selling mutual funds for a living. Uh, also enjoy the money that you earn. Um, you know, so uh, have your own version of the handbag. It's uh, whatever it is. So it doesn't matter how expensive it is. Uh, but, you know, if you are earning 100 rupees, then, you know, invest 80% of what you can, but enjoy 20%. Because, you know, life is life is meant to be enjoyed and money serves a purpose. Um, and it should not be all materialism and it should not be all saving. So there's a balance. Uh, and I think that balance is important because it keeps you going. Absolutely, Radhika. Thank you so much for that. Uh, now, coming to my next question, how has your personal finance journey evolved over the years? Like, what was the asset allocation then and what is it now? And what are the investment mistakes you made and learned from them? I mean, the asset allocation then was 100% equity, which was a completely stupid idea. It was a stupid idea in my context. I mean, there's nothing wrong in doing 100% equity. Um, to understand that I am, uh, and I've said this before, I'm a capital markets professional. My income is extremely volatile because, and my husband, Nalin, is a capital markets professional as well. Um, so in good years of the stock market, our funds do very well. Those funds on carry or high returns, our AUMs grow, money comes, bonuses are good. We are paid in stock, all that happens. In bad years, this reverses. So we are like a very, very high beta couple. A high beta, I mean, we have like five times beta to the stock market. So personal investments, I think, have to be a lot more conservative. So I think the big learning from 2008 is that asset allocation is a lot more conservative. Um, and, uh, you know, now instead of 100% equity, it's very significantly in funds like balance advantage funds, which is a mix of equity and debt. And then there might be some international and mid and small cap, but the core is a lot more conservative. Um, obviously, um, in 2006, seven, uh, I was not married. So uh, while Nalan and I were dating, we were doing things separately. Now it's also a little more planned for the family. So uh, there is more goal orientation in our investments. Um, we sit and talk about them. We sit and talk about things every quarter. We look at long-term goals, like we had bought a house a few years ago. So there's a little more science behind this uh, because we have you know, goals as a family that we have to fulfill. Uh, sure. Uh, Radhika, do you agree that uh, for a woman, a personal finance a journey could be different from a, a man's personal finance journey? Anything else? Sir? Every, I think every individual's personal finance journey is different. I don't think it's not man or woman. I think the rules of personal finance the rules of good investing are the same, uh, whether you are a man or woman, but I think every individual's journey is different. Like I always say, even if you take two 30 year old men or women, either take two 30 year old women, uh, their own journeys may be very different. One woman may be from a very well off family where she doesn't have any liabilities and she may be married to a doctor who's job is not capital markets linked and you know she can afford to take a lot of risk in the other woman maybe one who's supporting elderly parents and you know is funding her sister's education her situation is and a third woman maybe one who's 30 um, and doing a startup um, and so her income is fundamentally volatile versus the first two of them have salaried income that's regular so I think each person's journey is very, very, very different, man or woman, but the rules of personal finance are the same. Sure. Uh, let me move to my next question. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, I heard one of your speeches in which uh, you said that, you know, a uh, young 25-year-old Radhika left a perfectly good salary job in the US, came back to India to start a financial services company on her own with no business experience. Her all savings went into starting that firm and as mentioned, quote unquote, for a life of uncertainty. That Radhika mm -hmm. is driven, ambitious and full of jest uh, to start something and make it big. And here you are, one of the most respectable persons in the mutual fund industry. 
Radhika, tell us if that 25 year old Radhika with the wisdom of today's Radhika be, be, be able to take that step? You know, this is a really funny question. In the context of something else, I was having this chat with my mother yesterday and I said, I admire the fearlessness I had at the age of 24, 25. Uh, I don't know if I would have it today. I, I want to say I would, but I don't know if I would have that fearlessness today. Uh, I think there is something magical about young blood. Um, you don't think as much about consequences. I mean, you think a little, I mean, even at that point, I thought a little, um, but your sense of downside is limited. Um, there is perhaps less weight of reputation, what you've achieved, uh, less weight of goals ahead of you. Um, so I, I would love to say that I would be as fearless as the 25 year old person I was. Uh, but that that was a pretty fearless person, I, I have to say. And I guess, you know, uh, one of the things I always tell young people is, is your 20s, 20s is a time to go out and take those risks. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, you know, at, at, at 35 and 45, and it's not to say that people don't do it. Look, Falguni Naya did it and a lot of people do it. Uh, but, you know, on average, I think, you know, you don't have liabilities at that age. You have very little to lose. I think, you know, the, the trade in finance is much better. You have less to lose. You have a lot to gain. You have a lot of energy. So it's sort of time to max out that energy. Right. Uh, many years back, I was watching uh, one of uh, Zach Ma's uh, video in which he said, uh, you know, you have to take how much of a risk you can only before 30 years. And that really stuck in me. I'm a chartered accountant, but I really wanted to oh, try, uh, you know, uh, business journalism as, uh, you know, one of the uh, careers for me. So, you know, that really stuck in me. And then I really just wanted to give it a try. And I gave it a try and here I am. And I'm very thankful for that. For yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I think, look, I think I've taken uh, the biggest career risks, uh, you know, uh, in my 20s and even, you know, the biggest, more personal risks in my early 30s. Sometimes I look back on them and I'm like, what was I thinking? But, you know, uh, I think your 20s are a time to max out the madness. Yeah, sure. Uh, if you can have a small takeaway from uh, this uh, part, Radhika, what do you say someone who wanted to leave their job and start a business? Uh, what financial aspects should they keep in mind before taking that plunge? Okay, so I think one budget conservatively in your business, you know, everyone thinks that the business will get off the ground very quickly. Um, costs are often higher than we estimate. Revenue takes time to come in. Um, and you really need a couple of years of income. Uh, otherwise, life can be very tough because, uh, you know, and I remember in our startup, we didn't take salaries for quite some time. Um, so I think budget conservatively, that, that is extremely important budget for a few years of no income. Uh, in your business, obviously, I mean, it depends on if it's externally funded or internally funded, but you know, I'm a little old school, uh, keep costs uh, in check. Um, and then of course, be financially prudent. I mean, make sure that you take the risk when you're financially ready to take the risk. As I said, uh, it's very easy to start with business. I think the hard thing is to sustain the hard yards. Um, and uh, don't get into it uh, reading uh, the unicorn valuations in the media. I mean, it's like someone wanting to get into the film industry because Shah Rukh Khan came in from outside and became a superstar. I mean, for every one of those stories, there are failed actors and failed startups and failed aspiring Virat Kohli's. So I think get into it for the passion of doing it and know that you're going to be at it for quite a while. Sure, sure. And, um, and like, as you said earlier, you know, we understand that you manage your personal finances along with your husband, who is also into capital yeah. markets industry. Yeah. Uh, managing money with someone else could be difficult than managing it individually. Maybe there could be differences like, you know, differences in the risk appetite or maybe thoughts on the asset allocation, etc. How do you guys manage it, Radhika? We actually write stuff down. I think, you know, the important thing is, um, and I think nearly every senior woman you talk to and I've spoken to says that your choice of life partner is so important in life. Just, you know, as important as your choice of career, because that's, that's the one personal choice you really go out and make. And it's important to align on financial values, right? You know, there is just like there is a set of personal values, which are very, very personal. I think it's important to have, you know, in a set financial value system that both of you agree on. Um, we actually have a document um, and we review it once a year um, and it 
talks about it's very detailed it talks about the things we will not do talks about the things we will do uh, it talks about the kind of long term returns we want to make it has a basic asset allocation there talks about the fund houses we want to invest is very very de detailed and so all our disagreements and everything is finally reflected in that document and the reason we have it is so that when we do our quarterly reviews of money we don't fight with each other uh, we don't say oh i told you so uh, even in the document <laughs> uh, you know so that i think keeps life uh, fairly simple um, in this regard, I have to say being capital markets people uh, really helps um, and keeping your portfolio simple really helps. As I said, we don't do single stocks if we're doing things in funds. I mean, there's only so much complication that there is. So if you look at both of us, our investment portfolios are very, very simple uh, and our approach to money is very conservative. So even when we were budgeting a few years ago on what kind of house to buy, uh, you know, we erred on the side of conservative and later we upgraded the house. And that's that's just how we are. So there is an alignment of financial values. We are very clear that we don't want money to be a stress. So when March 2020 happened and markets fell, stock prices fell and fund value, there, there was no stress. Uh, you know, we've been through that in 2008 and 2009, uh, and we don't want to go through that again. Yeah, uh, because since you're from capital markets industry, everybody might have a thought that you must be very risk uh, taking a person yeah. in terms of uh, investments. But it's very interesting to know that you're very conservative with your investments. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, how often do you uh, review your uh, portfolio? Uh, Radhika? Quarterly, 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 not more frequently than that. Um, so what are the factors know. that you consider? Uh, sorry. And actually, we don't make very many changes. I mean, it's it's rare to see us get out of funds, we give funds time even, and we invest in Edelweiss funds, and of course, non-Edelweiss funds also. We give things time, we hold very few funds, uh, but we review things once a quarter. And I, I I, know people who review their investments once a day and once a month, and it's just too frequent because businesses don't change that much. And it's a cause for stress. So we really don't review things more than once a quarter. Uh, and un unless something is egregiously wrong, we don't make changes. And we use all the basic simple tools, right? You know, uh, SIPs for monthly income, uh, STPs often when bonus money comes in. I mean, that's the only time when we have to really think about where do we want to deploy it because it's usually a large purpose. But monthly income via SIPs, I mean, it's very simple, actually. Sure, sure. Uh, small takeaway again here. Uh, what do you suggest a young couple who is about to start their investment journey together? So what do you suggest them? I think first talk about money together. I think a lot of young couples don't even talk. And remember that if you're going to be partners in life, you should also be partners in financial life. Talk. Um, put down a few basics that matter to you. I, I highly recommend the document. I mean, I could give credit uh, to my husband for figuring that out, but I highly recommend the document. But talk and get the basics of your values together. And don't assume it's one person's job. It's both people's job. Brilliantly put. I mean, one person can execute it, but at least uh, you know, one person can sit and do the transactions and do the online stuff. In my case, my husband actually does that. Um, just because of time, uh, but both of us know where the money is. Both of us make the choices together. So that's it. That's very important. I agree with that. Uh, and now coming to the next question, which is very interesting and many of us want to know, where do you invest uh, in terms of categories of funds? Um, and where do you invest for long or short term goals? Uh, where is your emergency fund parked? Uh, can you give us mm -hmm. some okay. details about it? So very short term money, very short term money in liquid funds. Um, seems to be the easiest. Um, and the next category I like is arbitrage funds uh, for people who are not familiar. It's a category that's equity, but actually works like debt. So you get short term debt returns without the worry of credit or duration. And because there's equity taxation um, for money that's one to three year money, it actually turns out to be extremely tax efficient. So arbitrage is preferred. Um, I don't have long-term fixed income investments, even though uh, Edelweiss does some very good fixed income products, particularly uh, passive debts. And the reason I don't have long-term fixed income is because I have a low home loan. So the rate of home loan and the rate of fixed income investments, it just doesn't make sense. Um, and then on the equity side, uh, the core, as I said, is balanced advantage funds, uh, largely my own fund house there, but balanced advantage funds. Um, mix of equity and debt. I do an SIP into BAF and uh, 
you know, I'm very happy to note that over the last five, seven years, my simple, humble BAF SIP, which is like total khichdi or dal rice, is probably yielded me 14, 15% without any headache. So I'm very happy with that. And then I supplement that conservative SIP with some more aggressive things. So I have SIPs in mid cap funds, I have SIPs in small cap funds, um, and then I have uh, some international allocation uh, to some US funds and some emerging markets slash, slash China funds. So this is everything else. Obviously, there's a separate portion of my income aside that I have to put as per SEBI guidelines. That's that's a separate part. So that's an all funds or Okay. Do you invest directly in stocks by any chance? Nothing. The only stock that either Nalin or I have held in our lives has been Edelweiss because we are ESOP holders. Otherwise, there has not been a single stock investment. Uh, again, people are surprised to know that. One is uh, the rules are extremely complicated. Uh, secondly, I really believe in the power of funds. Uh, I don't have the time to track that many companies. Uh, and I think my fund managers do a fab job of doing it. So uh, in the last 15, 16 year career, it's been funds all through. Mm, nice, okay. So what about your uh, retirement uh, funds, Radhika? Where do you guys invest? And uh, do you have any opinion on uh, NPS, National Pension Scheme? I don't. So I don't. Uh, I have the uh, mandatory, uh, you know, PF deductions, etc., that go away for retirement uh, from the salary. Uh, we haven't done anything beyond that. Uh, perhaps we're a little. Yeah, I know there's no age to start planning retirement. So we built a corpus. Uh, I don't know if it's a retirement corpus, though, because uh, we are a little young to think about uh, retirement. But we keep doing our SIPs and building our corpus without a dedicated sort of retirement goal. Perhaps five years later, we'll have to start thinking about that, too. Sure, sure. If, if you can just have to uh, break up between the equity and debt uh, portion, uh, what would it be for you in your portfolio? For us right now, as I said, 70% is BAF. So BAF is about 50% debt, 50% equity. So 35 debt, balance equity. Okay, sure. 35, 40 debt, 60 equity. Yeah, sure. Um, next is about uh, you know the COVID times. This uh, COVID times have actually you know wrecked lives of many. Uh, if there's one mm -hmm. thing COVID crisis have taught you in terms of personal finance, what is it? I think it's uh, seeing people through COVID times uh, and the fact that people don't know, you know, COVID has led to such unfortunate situations, losses in families um, and finance matters are a mess. So the other, the spouse may not know if the partner, something happens to the partner, even if they're in the hospital, where the sources of money are, what all the bank accounts are, just what is there. So, you know, I call it crossing, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. I mean, my parents have done this, right? My parents during COVID times made a spreadsheet where my, and my father's 70. Um, my father actually put down all the bank accounts, all their passwords, explained it to my mother, everybody. So I think just everyone knowing where all that hard-earned money that was earned through your lifetime is and how to access it. I think just those basics is super, and having less in terms of, of, you know, number of accounts, having the nominees in place, limited number of investments, because the more you have, the more right. it is to manage it. You know, we don't realize how painful it is to manage. Right, right. It also brought up the importance of having an insurance and also emergency yeah. fund. So, Health insurance. Um, Emergency fund, I mean, just those basics, as I said, contingency fund in place and a contingency fund, if you think it should be three months, probably make it nine months. Um, yeah. I think that is important. Uh, you know, we always underestimate the cost of health insurance. So that is something that, you know, is important to keep in mind. So I think COVID has taught you the importance of checking off the basics and a lot of people don't check off the basics. Right. So uh, how many months of uh, emergency fund that you uh, guys manage? We keep about six to nine. That's that's right. Okay. Okay. And uh, you just mentioned about the home loan. Uh, can you tell us, uh, you know, what are the kind of uh, obligations, you know, financially every month that, you know, you have and, you know, what, what is the kind of uh, percentage of the total income one can have uh, with respect to liabilities uh, periodically? So our stance on a home loan, and look, this is the perspective of a salaried professional, uh, where both of us are earning, is that 
uh, and we we you know we can pay down a home loan but i think a home loan and i'm not a fan of leverage uh, or excessive debt taking uh, but i think a home loan works really well especially with this level of rates because it's some of the cheapest financing you'll get i mean radhika gupta borrows at 6.5 7% in the state of maharashtra in fact the sovereign is borrowing at 7% so you know radhika is probably getting a pretty good deal um, so as long as and i don't want to give a heuristic here as long as you can service comfortably the interest on the home loan monthly um i think that works so that's that's the math we do okay sure sure uh, radhika uh, enough of my personal finance questions i was actually watching one of your video and that was the day i was actually a little low and uh, towards the end of the video you were saying uh, you know uh, you you are unique and that makes you uh, you know the way you are makes you unique you know tell us in your words uh, to the rest of the audience uh, so what they have to you know if they are feeling down or if they are uh, thinking that they are doing something wrong in a wrong way so what do you what do you have to say for them uh i said two things one is everyone has really low days okay me included um you know so sometimes i get the tag that videos are very motivating and i i take that with a lot of uh, gratitude but one everyone has a low day so uh it's okay to have them uh you know i probably have one day in a month where i feel like the world is ending and i want to kill everybody and i hate everything is it's, it's just natural so i think one that that feeling is very normal um and secondly and the same thing i say about personal finance uh you know then don't compare what you need to do to anyone else i think personal finance in that sense teaches you a lot about life but you know your journey is unique your yeah. personal finance journey is also unique um and live that unique journey i mean you know it's 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 hilarious so someone i i'm about five and a half months pregnant um which a lot of people don't know and um i've had kids i i've chosen to have a child fairly late in life uh, i was 38 39 so someone was telling me that career woman if you're career oriented should have kids very very early and that's the only formula and my only point is there is no formula right because each of us has a different journey a different set of circumstances you know i was an entrepreneur in my 20s i mean kids was the last thought on my mind um i'm more settled right now and uh, that's the reason i make the decisions i do so i i i think judge your own journey uh, by your own metrics that's wonderful radhika thank you so much for joining us today i'm sure everybody who have been tuned in for this session would have great insights from this session thank you again thank you so much for joining us thank you if you think you have any questions or suggestions you can reach out to me on twitter at satya sundanam s a t y a s o n t a n a m you can also email us at mintmoney@livemint.com